Cracked rocks, deep gullies after a storm, rivers carving through valleys. What's going on here? What do all these have in common? They're part of the Earth's powerful, invisible makeover, happening every second beneath your feet. Welcome to Magfar Online, where curiosity turns into clarity. Today's episode is part of our ongoing series on Earth's changing surface, and we're exploring the powerful trio that constantly reshapes our world, weathering, erosion, and deposition. Ever wondered how soil disappears from hillsides after heavy rain? Or what happens to all that material once it's washed away? You are in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll not only know the difference between these three processes, you'll be able to see the land differently. Here's a question to get you thinking. Where do you think all the soil goes after erosion? Drop your answers in the comments, we will feature the best responses in our next episode. And don't forget the mini quiz at the end to lock in what you've learnt. Like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss a lesson. This is Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Ready to break down how rocks crumble, soil moves, and landscapes form? Let's dive in. Weathering is the natural process that breaks down rocks into smaller pieces like sand, soil, or clay in situ which means the rock breaks down right where it is and isn't moved. Weathering involves only the breakdown of rock, it does not involve transportation. There are three main types of weathering, physical, chemical, and biological. Physical weathering is the breakdown of rocks into smaller pieces without changing their chemical composition. The rock structure changes, but the minerals stay the same. Chemical weathering involves the breakdown of rocks through chemical reactions that change the mineral's composition, often forming new substances. Biological weathering happens when living organisms, like plant roots, animals, or even microorganisms, contribute to breaking down rock, either physically or chemically. We've covered each type of weathering in detail in earlier videos. Check out the links in the comments if you want to review them. Once rocks have been broken down by weathering, whether physically, chemically, or biologically, the next step in the process is erosion. Erosion is the movement or transportation of the weathered rock particles, also called sediment, from one place to another. This movement is mainly caused by natural forces like water, wind, ice, and gravity. Water erosion is the washing away of soil, rock, and sediment by the action of water. Water is one of the most powerful agents of erosion. When it rains, water flows over the land, picking up loose soil and rock particles. Rivers and streams carry these materials downstream, where they may be deposited elsewhere. Over long periods, this process can shape entire landscapes, forming valleys, riverbanks, and even deep canyons. A great example is the Grand Canyon in the USA. It was formed by the continuous erosion caused by the Colorado River, which cut deep into the rock over millions of years, creating a massive and beautiful landform. Water erosion also occurs along coastlines. Waves crash against cliffs and beaches, gradually wearing them away and shaping the coastal landscape. This is called wave erosion. In dry and arid areas, such as deserts, the wind becomes an important agent of erosion. Wind picks up fine particles like sand and dust and carries them over long distances. This is known as wind erosion. As these particles blow across the land, they can strike rocks, slowly wearing them down in a process called abrasion. Abrasion is also a form of physical weathering, where the surface of rocks becomes smoother and more rounded over time. Wind erosion can lead to the formation of sand dunes and the movement of soil, which can greatly affect farming and plant life. In very cold regions, glacier or large, 
slow-moving masses of ice act as agents of erosion. As glacier move downhill, they scrape and drag rocks along with them. These rocks grind against the land underneath, carving out valleys and other dramatic landforms. When the glacier melts, it drops the rocks and sediment it was carrying. Ice erosion is a slow process, but over thousands of years, it can completely reshape the landscape. When gravity pulls rocks, soil, or mud downhill, it's called mass movement. This natural process can happen suddenly, like a landslide, rockfall, or mudslide, or it can happen slowly over time. Even without water, wind, or ice, gravity alone can move huge amounts of earth from higher to lower ground. Mass movement plays a big role in erosion and can lead to damage to houses, roads, and farmlands, especially in hilly areas or after heavy rain. Humans cause erosion by removing vegetation through deforestation, construction, and farming practices, leaving soil exposed to wind and water. Overgrazing by livestock also reduces plant cover, increasing soil vulnerability. Mining and building activities disrupt the soil making erosion possible. Deposition is when rock and soil carried by erosion are finally dropped or laid down in a new location. You can also view deposition as the dropping off or settling of that material in a new place. Deposition is the natural process where materials like rock fragments, soil, sand, and sediments that have been carried by erosion are eventually laid down or settled in a new location. After erosion moves these particles through agents like water, wind, ice, a glacier, and ocean waves, deposition occurs when these forces slow down or lose their energy, causing them to drop the material they were carrying. In river systems, deposition commonly occurs where the flow of water decreases, such as on the inside bends of river meanders, at river mouths, or during flooding on floodplains. This creates distinct landforms like floodplains, levees, and deltas. Floodplains form when rivers overflow their banks, depositing fertile sediment layers beneficial for agriculture. Levees are natural embankments built up by repeated flooding, while deltas form at the mouth of a river, extending into oceans or lakes, as sediments accumulate, creating new land over time. The shape and structure of deltas depend on factors such as sediment load, wave energy, and tidal influences. Wind deposition usually occurs in arid, dry environments such as deserts. When the wind speed decreases, it deposits sand and dust, creating sand dunes and lurse plains. Sand dunes are hills or ridges formed by the accumulation and shifting of wind-blown sand, often shaped into distinctive patterns by wind direction and strength. Lurse plains, composed of very fine and fertile wind-blown dust, cover extensive areas and provide productive agricultural soils. Glacier, which are large moving bodies of ice, also deposit material when they melt. This leads to the formation of landforms such as moraines, which are ridges of rocks and soil left behind by retreating glacier, and drumlins, which are smooth, oval hills formed by glacial deposits. Along coastlines, waves and currents can deposit sand and small stones along the shore when they lose energy. This process creates landforms like beaches, spits, and bars. A spit is a long, narrow stretch of sand that sticks out into the sea from the land. If a spit keeps growing and eventually stretches across a bay and connects two sides of land, it becomes a bar. A bar can trap water behind it, creating a lagoon. Here's the key, weathering, erosion, and deposition are a team. First, weathering breaks the rock down. Then, erosion moves those pieces away. Finally, deposition drops them off elsewhere. This cycle is always happening around us, it's how mountains are worn down, beaches are built, and valleys are formed. These three processes work together to constantly reshape Earth's surface. We've just explored how Earth's surface is constantly reshaped through weathering, erosion, and deposition. 
Remember, weathering breaks the rock in place, erosion moves the pieces, deposition drops them off and builds it back up somewhere new. Now it's your turn to test your knowledge. Pause the video and try the revision questions that follow. Once you're done, compare your answers with the ones that will appear on screen. It's a great way to lock in what you've learned today. But wait, we are not done yet. Up next on Magfar Online. What happens along the journey of a river? Discover meanders, waterfalls, oxbow lakes, and other amazing features shaped by erosion and deposition. It's where rivers carve, twist, drop, and build, like nature's own sculptor. So hit that like, subscribe, and turn on the bell so you don't miss what's next. The link for the next video in this series is below. This is Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Stay curious, stay sharp, and see you in the next video.